Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Ato Abnashide, uh, Dr. Teke Alemu, the Dean of the College of Management, Information, and Economic Sciences, uh, distinguished participants from government and development partner agencies, representatives from the non-state sector, colleagues from the UN system, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to warmly welcome all of you to the launching of the Human Development Report of 2011. I'm delighted that so many of you have been able to turn up today, as so many of you representing government institutions, the donor community, civil society organizations, and students of Addis Ababa University. We look forward to very lively discussions uh, later this morning. Allow me a moment to offer my profound appreciation to the government of Ethiopia for its keen interest in the human development agenda, and in particular, His Excellency Atwa Meshide for gracing today's occasion with his presence. I would also like to thank Addis Ababa University under the leadership of the President, Dr. Masu, Sagai, and the School of Economics in particular for collaborating with us to launch this year's Human Development Report in Ethiopia. <laughs> Excellencies, distinguished guests, Human Development Reports, as many of you do know, have been published by UNDP for over 20 years now. And these independent global reports have each year challenged mainstream thinking and helped to foster our understanding of development that goes merely beyond economic measurements. The Human Development Report has been responsible for pioneering new ideas, some of them considered to be controversial at the time, but that have since become more widely accepted. To date, 21 reports have been produced covering a range of thematic issues that have been important to development policy and development policy formulation. Human development, as many of you do know, is the expansion of people's freedoms and people's capabilities to lead lives that they value and that they have risen to value. Human development is about expanding choices. An element of the Human Development Report series is the Human Development Index. A simple but ingenious index designed to measure relative human attainment of nations more subtly than any other ranking of nations by other methodologies. But as many of you here do know, the Human Development Index does not measure everything. And in recognition of its shortcomings, this year's report harnesses some very careful innovations that were introduced last year to the index, whilst retaining its simplicity and its familiarity. Distinguished guests, the theme of this year's Human Development Report, which is to be launched shortly by His Excellency the State Minister, is sustainability and equity, a better future for all. The report helps identify pathways for people, pathways for communities and countries and the international community to promote environmental sustainability and equity in a mutually reinforcing manner. The report highlights that the links between environmental sustainability and equity are critical for people today and for generations to come. This year's report emphasizes that, sorry, this year's report emphasizes the remarkable progress in human development the globe has witnessed. It also emphasizes that this progress in human development witnessed by the globe cannot continue without bold and united steps taken to reduce environmental risks and address inequality. A disturbing prediction made is that if the world in which we live today fails to reduce grave environmental risks, and if the world in which we live today fails to address deepening social inequalities, we will be facing a slowdown following the decades of sustained progress in human development that this world has witnessed. 
we may even be looking at a reversal at the global level of human development gains achieved so far. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, although you will shortly be receiving a full presentation of the contents of the report, allow me to just take a moment to flag some key messages highlighted in the report. The first message I'd like to flag is that many disadvantaged people carry a double burden of deprivation. They are more vulnerable to the wider effects of environmental degradation because of more severe stresses and fewer coping mechanisms. And these disadvantaged people must also deal with threats to their immediate environment from such factors as indoor and outdoor pollution, dirty water, and poor sanitation. The second message I'd like to flag is that at national levels, power imbalances and gender inequalities are linked to reduce access to improved water and sanitation, to land degradation, amongst <coughs> others. This amplifies the effects associated with income disparities. Gender inequalities also worsen environmental outcomes. If we were to expand reproductive rights, if we were to expand health care, and if we were to expand access to contraceptives, we would take a great leap towards redressing gender inequality and further reduce the pressures put on our planet's environment by slowing down global demographic growth. And the third message I'd like to fly is that investments that improve equity would advance both sustainability and human development. Stronger accountability and democratic processes in part through support from active civil society and media, as well as empowered and independent watchdogs are all key to both sustainability and equity. Colleagues, this year's report advocates strongly for global reforms to promote equity, including reforms in global governance that guarantees greater participation. Financing flows need to be channeled towards addressing the critical challenges of unsustainability and inequity. And this would include putting in place mechanisms to provide finance for promoting safe, clean energy for all, finance for promoting climate change, mitigation, technological innovation, and adaptation, and access to portable water and basic sanitation, and also social protection guarantees for poor people and communities. Colleagues, I'm particularly keen about today's launch of the Human Development Report because of the important perspective it gives us on the trend in human development in Ethiopia. Ethiopia's Human Development Index value for 2011 is calculated at 0 0.363, which unfortunately still places Ethiopia in the low human development category and positions this country at 174 out of 187 countries ranked in the report. But the good news is that between the year 2000 and 2011, Ethiopia's Human Development Index registered an overall increase of some 32%, representing an annual average increase of about 2.6% since 2000. I must stress here, and, and this is particularly important because I know the media is here, I must stress here that it is misleading to compare rankings with those of previous reports because the underlying data and the methodology have changed, as well as the number of countries ranked. For example, only 169 countries were ranked in the year in the 2010 report compared to 187 countries ranked in this year's report. What is more important in my view is the trend. What is more important is the trend, which in Ethiopia's case is positive over the past decade. When one looks at the components of the Human Development Index, there is clear evidence that significant human development gains have been registered in this country. For example, the report shows that 
between 1980 and the year 2011, which is this year, life expectancy at birth in Ethiopia increased by over 15 years, whilst expected years of schooling increased by just under six years. And from 1985 to 2011, Ethiopia's gross national income per capita increased by a whopping 92%. These are all achievements to be celebrated, in spite of this country still being in the low human development category. Distinguished guests, in September of 2010, at the UN General Assembly, the world applauded Ethiopia's commendable progress towards reaching five of the eight Millennium Development Goals. This country has excelled in mainstreaming these goals into its overarching national development strategies. There is no doubt in my mind that the government of, of Ethiopia is well aware of the remaining challenges on the MDGs, and it has not been shy in outlining a robust and ambitious five-year plan, the growth and transformation plan, which all of us do know, and successful implementation of which, I believe, bodes well for prospects for achieving the remaining Millennium Development Goals. And we at UNDP, and indeed the UN system as a whole, stand ready to deepen our partnership with the government and people of Ethiopia to support this country achieve its ambitious development aspirations. Ethiopia has indeed made important human development strides, but the deficits are huge. Given the deficits, the challenge ahead is monumental. We all have a collective responsibility, all of us do have a collective responsibility to support Ethiopia's national transformation agenda. A collective responsibility towards the least privileged amongst us today and in the future around the world. And all of us, and I, I emphasize that, all of us do have a moral imperative to ensure that the present is not the enemy of the future. Let me once again, in conclusion, express my profound appreciation to His Excellency, uh, the State Minister for Nishide, and also to the University of Addis Ababa uh, for hosting us. I thank you very much.